name's Jim Stambakis, uh, Lake City, they call me Sticks. I get that nickname to the city, and I make my walking sticks. I've been doing this now for well over 10 years. Love the hobby. And uh, th these are the tools that I made. Bench here, draw blade, stripper, and uh, some simple sandpaper, and things like that, that I can use to sand down the walking stick. Now the demonstration is, is showing you how I make these walking sticks out of them. All the way from the garden all the way to here. And I take, take these small saplings, I check them out with a measuring tape, I wrap these around to about six and a half all the way around. That's a good size walking stick, and I measure them about six feet long. I let them dry for about a month, and then afterwards, I'll take the walking stick, cut off any ends that I feel that's not any good, and then afterwards, kind of smooth it out with the draw blade. I'll take my draw blade here, and just like this, and you remove my bend. Put this on the bench right here, step forward, and this works just like a vise, similar to a regular vise, but you're using your weight to hold the stick down. And I'm taking the draw blade, and I'm bringing it forward at like maybe the 30 to like 25 degree angle, pressing down, and sliding forward. All along, I'm taking off the bark. As you can see, there are certain areas sometimes where the knots are, and can be very hectic to uh, try to go around it. So basically, what I'll do, I'll just totally go around it, and then afterwards sand it down with a file or some sandpaper, kind of smooth it over a little bit. After stripping it. I just keep going around in a circle as I'm going along. It takes a little bit of patience to do, but it's not a hard thing. Is the draw blade strong enough to take out a knot, or you got to do the sanding? Oh, yeah. You, it's strong enough to take off the knot. If you got enough strength in your arms, and then, <laughs> okay, you can do that. I've gotten to certain cases like this right here where I have to take it. Now you see the knot right there. I have to go around the knot. Just like that. So see. how do you avoid giving yourself a second belly button? <laughs> <laughs> so what I do, when I, do, I move it to the side. Flip it over to the side here. Left or the right side, whichever is easier. And I take it. Show them how to do this and to they see. Enjoy it? Oh, yeah, they enjoy it. They have <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, you know, I found the seniors will ask me to do classes. They want to ask me when I'm doing the next class. The biggest class I've had with the seniors is about eight students. And to see an elderly person, this is one old lady that I had. Old as a, person. Well. <laughs> She was in her 80s. Wow. Okay? She was sitting down doing a walking stick, and the emotion she put into this was real amazing. She had a smile on her face, and she was going like, like a bat out of hell. With it. And she was going really strong. So after she got done doing a walking stick, she's like, oh, I love this. I want to know when you're having another class again. And I want to sign up. Did she make her own stick? Yes, she did. I show the seniors how to make them. I explain to them how to do it, and I sit down with them and let the seniors sit here and show them. I'll have them hold on the blade, and I'll hold on to the outside of it. Give them the idea, push down on it like a 30 degree angle, and then bring it forward towards you. Just like this. How long is that to sharpen the blade? Actually, you don't really have to sharpen it. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, after a while, yeah, it will get done. You just take some uh, some sandpaper or something like that, and you just go over it like it's sand, and it works well. You're not using a you know file to it, so basically all you're doing is just give it a slight little uh, point to it, a little edge, and it works quite well. What kind of wood do you like to work with the best? Well, I like the white birch. The river birch works well. 
And I use that for the seniors because it's a soft wood and it's an easy wood to work with. When it dries out like this, then it gets a little harder because the bark is a little harder. And, but it still works out quite well. Like this. What kind of wood is that? This is a river birch. River birch. Yep. Where do you cut them, though, John? Where I cut them? I cut them along the Merrimack River. Now, city and stuff, like over on, uh, along the BFW Highway and the River Walk in Centerville, uh -huh. they'll cut that whole section off and of different trees. And there's a lot of river birds along the banks. And I'll actually go down, check them out, see what's good enough straight. I have a portable tape measure that I wrap around the bottom of the tape of the stick. And I have it ranged between six and a half to about seven inches all the way around. If it's that long, that well, that wide, and you know about six feet long, if it looks good enough to do it, then I will cut it. So, and, is it green when you cut it? Yes, it is green when you cut it. Okay. Yeah. And you only have to let it cure for three months? For a couple of months, at least. Okay. Yeah. What I'll do when I cure it, I'll drill a hole on either side of each flocking stick, a hole, like a, maybe a quarter inch hole, from one end and to the other, and I lay down the stick flat on the ground or on the floor and let it dry for about a month or so. What's the hole for? What's the hole for? Just to drain out all the fluids that's inside the blocking stick. It helps dry the stick a lot faster. Mm -hmm. By our rights, the people I've talked to who do blocking sticks say you need to let them cure for about two years. Mm -hmm. And I've taught, and I've even said that quite a few of the uh, stick because if you just drill the center of the hole, you know, with a nice quarter inch drill bit, dig it in about maybe two and a half or maybe three inches deep, and then uh, just let it sit there for about a month or so. And it's, it's good to work with, it's fairly dry. It doesn't split, because I know certain trees, if you, you know, don't let them dry enough, they will split, because uh, the wood and uh, the water moisture falls out, and then the wood starts to split. When you're drying the wood, do you have to worry about it warping, or as long as it's, it's level, it's not going to warp? Well, as long as the ground is level. You know, I mean, I'm never going to get a straight stick out of here, never. And that's what's good about it, it gives it character. Because not every stick that I work with is straight. Each stick has its own character, and I'll uh, check the artwork for each stick, what it looks like. And then I'll say, okay, this is what I think works well for this walking stick. Which... Start to finish. To strip a stick, about how long does it take you? An hour, two, three? About three hours, give or take. Now I've gone through certain sticks that are, I can get done in less, uh, less than an hour. But basically, it takes about a couple of hours, and you don't want to rush it. And you want to try to enjoy the, you know, the theme of it, which is good. When you're rushing it, then you're forcing it, and then you get tired too easy which is not a good thing, because then you're exhausting yourself, and that's not a good thing. You want to enjoy the, you know, the enjoyment of this the type when you're doing this. And and how long does it take you to do the artwork? On the artwork? It can take anywhere between, let's say, two to uh, three weeks, maybe even longer, a month. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just got to look at the stick and say, okay, what looks well for this walking stick? or you know, maybe it's just a, a plain marking stick doing with natural stain over it. I've seen sticks where I've stripped them down and say, okay, well, let's not put any artwork on it. Let's just leave it the way it is. And I've seen sticks, this is a finished stick right here. It works beautiful. It looks excellent like this. Now, did you stain that or is it? No, this is all natural right now. Okay. I've uh, had sticks where I've stained because people like to use natural walking sticks because they want to decorate them themselves. And I've done raw sticks like this. If they don't decorate them, do they need a clear coat or something? So yeah, clear, a clear coat of so gloss. So the perspiration from your hand doesn't yeah. stain the stick? Oh, it'll uh, no matter what, because uh, the gloss will wear. As long as you're holding onto the stick, it's wearing, it's sweating your hand, will cause it to uh, you know, stain or wear off. I've had certain sticks where, you know, I've been, one walking stick that you see me walking around with, I've been walking around with it for quite a few years, and you can see the uh, darkness of the walking stick where I've hold all the sweat and everything from my hands, which is, I say it gives it some character, it tells you how long they've had it, which is pretty cool.
The, then I got the in inner box that I have to do. It's called the inner box. And that's this section right here. After the stick has been all stripped, it's out. Now, this has all been stripped already. Now we need to get that inner box that's off here. And this is what the draw blade is good for, for this. And what I'll do, take it at a slight angle. And just bring it forward like this. And now I'll take off that dark stuff right here at the grid. And I just keep going around in a circle with it. And as you see, it's coming off quite well. And then after it's been, been cleaned, I'll measure it out to what looks good. I have a line here on either side, and this is where I'll cut it. I'll take masking tape and wrap it around that area. And then this part, I'll cut off right here with uh, just a regular saw. The masking tape will help this from not splitting, so I won't get any chips in there. So it's like a vise holding onto the, the stick. And it works well. I do that on both sides with the blocking stick. Do you, uh, do you or have you had special orders for sticks? Oh yes, I get special orders all the time. I just did one just recently, this past Christmas, for a gentleman for his father, who was a Bruins fan. And made that for him for his father's Christmas. And uh, I've gotten calls back that he says his father walks around with this stick all the time. He loves this. He loves to take it out to his club and everything else. He loves showing it off. And have you gotten orders from that? Oh, yeah, I have. Do, do you put any advertising on it, gym sticks and stuff like that? Oh, I'll that? sign my walking sticks. <clears throat> Which is quite well, good. People like to know who I am. Of course, everybody around the city knows me anyway. <laughs> I got that nickname for the city hall. They call me the stick man. I got that through Rita Mercier and Ed Kennedy, Eileen Donahue, who also have walking sticks. A lot of uh, city reps, even our new governor. In Massachusetts, she has a walking stick of mine. Huh. So they get around a lot. Last time I... Did you bring it to her or did she... Yeah, oh yeah, I brought it to her. Last time she was here visiting the new Low High Gym, I brought one down to her and introduced myself and I offered her the walking stick. And she loves it. She says, next time you come to Boston, come to the State House. You're more than welcome, she says. Do you, do you use a, a wood burning tool to engrave the wood? Yes, I will use a wood burning tool. But that's getting into a little more detail. I'm just showing you basics. And then if you want more you know, detailed stuff, like where I'll do with the LBD lights inside, then you gotta get more tools for that. You know, special drill, drill bits, files and chisels, and things of that nature. When you're done with the draw knife and the other knife for scraping, do you sand both yes, I do sand them both down. edges and stuff? Yeah, I'll do all that. That's basically what this is, all the sanding involved. Now, you can't get every scratch or everything off of here, but that's okay. That will give the stick a little bit of character. If you see, you know, you can take it around. You can see where the scratches are where I've left. And, but that's okay. That gives the stick a little bit of character. It says it's been handmade. It's not machine. And that's what's good about that. Do you People like to see it. No, what I'll use on the bottom is a hot glue stick. People are amazed that I tell them I do that, and it works better than the, you know, the bottom, the rubber piece, because the rubber piece doesn't give it a good look. You want to keep it looking like a walking stick, not a handicap stick. So what do you put on it? A hot glue stick. I'll take some hot glue with some masking tape. I'll wrap the masking tape halfway on the bottom of the stick, and then make a cup out of it. Did a hot glue gun, heat it up, and then fill it in with hot glue inside with the tape. Let it dry, and it's solid. It's beautiful. It holds nicely. When you do the color, do you use a, a colored wood stain or something else? Well, to do all the artwork, I'll use uh, Sharpies. Okay, permanent marker Sharpies. I'll go over it with you know a pencil first, and then see how it looks, and then I'll uh, take a photo that the picture that I'm doing. I hand, and then I'll hold the picture up to, to 
to the locking stick. Okay, now this is going to look the way this is, so I'll, then I'll go over it with the shoppies. I'll burn the outside of it so the shoppies don't bleed through the wood because when I stain them, and the marker will bleed. And also when I gloss them as well. That's the worst case scenario when you're glossing the walking stick over uh, artwork. The markers will bleed on the walking stick. So you do a nice thin coat of water-based gloss, really thin, just to cover the walk, the artwork. And once it dries real quick, because water-based gloss dries in less than five minutes, first coat. After that, it's easier to go on. And then you don't have to worry about the bleeding part of it. So you don't do like a spray paint for your coat? No, 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 okay. no, I don't spray paint. <laughs> I've actually made a few shillelaghs. Some of them you actually yeah, use them. Yeah, I saw a couple of them. Yeah. What's a shillelagh? It's like an, uh, an Irish thornwood shillelagh. It's the roots of uh, the thornwood. It grows in a nice big ball inside the ground. What I'll do for the thornwood, I'll go and look around for the seed. I'll dig around the tree, see what it looks like. I won't dig the whole thing up, but if I see they're not good enough, and then I'll cut like the roots around the tree, which is really good, and then I'll get that nut right there. So it has a float. Yeah. That's what makes it. Yes, that's what makes it. Similar. Those you make? Oh, I made. Uh, I don't know. I can't count how many I made. I mean, I made a lot. How many coats of sealer do you put on? About three. Three coats. Do you sand in between? No. Really? Yeah, really. Doesn't, doesn't. No, yeah, each coat I usually like to wait about uh, half an hour or so before I put on a new coat over it. And then that first coat is totally dry, and then I can go over it again with a second coat, let that dry, then the third coat, do the same thing, let it dry to a certain level. If you put it on too quickly, what's going to happen? It's going to bubble up and it's just going to cause problems, and you're going to have to sand it down. But with a ticky time, putting on the coat, it works well. You don't have to worry about sanding and things like that. So? We have for 20 more minutes. So. Anybody here wants to uh, give it a try? Is this for, uh, no? No one willing to get up here and give it a try, huh? <laughs> Yes, you just sit here. If you don't mind getting a little sand. Well, no, sit down. You need to sit down while you're doing this. I need to sit down. Yes, you need to sit down. Now put your foot over there. Push down. There you go. Now two hands. Okay, one at the top. Over here. And then. Yes, and then bring it forward. Just like that. And just keep going until you remove all the. Brown in a, in a box. Once you see it clear, then you just move on to the next level. And it was, it can't smooth the, well, I guess you can a little bit. Yeah, you can. Is it better to do long strokes or short strokes? Uh, long strokes, short strokes. It doesn't matter. It all depends on the person. It all depends on the person. It's, it yeah. is, it, it's a nice feeling. I mean, it feels, yes. um, Satisfying in some way. Um, the sound is nice too. And I don't know about the draw knife. It's a way to take out your daily frustrations. After there you go. Bad that's, work that's a good. Now and this looks dangerous because it seems to me if you lost it. Yeah, that's why I asked about the second bullet. You. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're communing with nature, Barry. Yes. <laughs> and you go slow. You know. You're not doing it that fast. You don't want to do it that fast. Just but uh, ideally, I'd keep rotating. This. Yes, you would have to keep rotating. So you're always on. Yeah, where, you, where you're getting knots right now, what you're doing. You go around. Yes, go around it. And then you can turn around. I like yes. the other tool better. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes a nice noise. You should try it. <laughs> but you'll come in situations it's very where. very satisfying. Give me that. <laughs> there you go. She she that stick you down. see that? See? It just, there's something nice about it. Yes, it's smooth. Sure. And it's a nice uh, piece of it. Sure. There. Okay. <laughs> Little. Okay.